Hello everyone, my name is Reed, and today we are going to be reading some malicious compliance stories. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy. One customer at a time? Alright. This happened a few years back. It might turn out long. During my college years, I worked part-time at a gas station. Besides getting fuel and cigarettes, you could also get some groceries, it was basically a small supermarket, and play different lottery games, buy scratch cards, and place bets on all kinds of sporting events. Soccer, tennis, basketball, motorsport, etc. We usually have our regulars with these things. Most of them played a ticket at a time, or per week. The more annoying people were the ones betting on the sporting matches, the ones that would come in at the last minute, because of the most recent odds, and bringing a stack of forms for us to scan. It's relatively simple work for us. People take a form, they fill in the form, mark check boxes, give the paper to us, we scan the filled in papers, the lottery machine either prints the valid playing ticket or gives an error. Unknown value on rule X, too much markings on rule Y, time limit exceeded for Z, etc. Usually it takes around 10 seconds from accepting one form to returning the form with the playing ticket computer was slowish, it could take 3 seconds from the scanner to recognize the form, needs a second or two to process, and then prints. When it started printing, we could remove the form from the scanner. But yeah, some regulars come in with 10 of those forms. If they're the only ones, no problem. If they filled in the forms before entering the store, no problem. If they accept the ticket, no problem. Try and see where I'm heading with this. Day 1 the guy comes in with a few of these betting forms to be scanned. I do my thing and he decides to fill in some extras while standing at my desk. He knows that the time limit for some games are closing in, so he starts rushing after he finishes a form. If the potential payout is low, he calls me back and wants to cancel the ticket, extra time as the cancellation slot doesn't work as smoothly as we want it to. While he's rushing the forms, the queue behind him starts growing, two, three, four people, either wanting cigarettes or pay for their fuel. I decide to help them while he's still filling out a form. The guy was not amused. He snapped at me saying, You're helping me first. I'm not done yet. You can't help more than one person at a time. Not happy. This guy acts entitled AF because of his gambling issue, and I get to handle the grumpy customers. Very well. A few minutes later he's done, Q is gone, and everyone paid for their stuff. Day 2. This is a few days slash shifts later. It's already quite busy as the queue doesn't seem to end. The continuous stream of customers wanting cigarettes, fuel, or change for the coffee machine seems to be endless. There are around 4 or 5 in line when our gambling guy comes in. At first he takes some forms and fills them in near the coffee machine. My line is still endless as I ring up everyone as fast as I can. Pump number? Loyalty card? Anything else? Free stamps? SIGs? Oh, not on the company card? Etc. I'm on fire. Gambling guy suddenly walks to my desk and places these forms on the counter, mid-transaction, mumbles something like, quickly, time, and walks back. I'm like, gotta help the queue first. When I help the next in line, the gambling guy walks up and asks why I haven't scanned his forms yet. The ticket printer can be heard, its sound when printing is just above speaking level. I reply, I can just help one customer at a time, and it's not your turn, while pointing to the queue at the desk. Needless to say, he wasn't happy. He missed most of the deadlines at the time I scanned his forms, he tried arguing with me over the time he had submitted his bets and such, but that doesn't sound like my problem. Come in a bit earlier just in case. I don't give priority to him because he walks in at the last minute because he can't get his timing slash planning right. I kept doing this to him as his attitude didn't change at all and he kept coming in late and making demands. A year later, the lottery machine was removed. Manager said it took too much time administratively. Never saw the guy at the gas station again. Last time I saw him, he was at a supermarket nearby where you could play those things as well. I didn't walk up to him, he was just an old customer. Hopefully he changed his attitude by now, I'll never know. Job well done, OP. Don't stoop to his level, communicate your boundaries, and don't let him mistreat you in any way. Well done. Woman calls 911 on a movie. 
So this was in 2013, back when I was working at a movie theater in my town. Right after Wolf of Wall Street came out, and this movie brought in a crowd. Theaters were sold and packed, known for its not-so-kid-friendly scenes and was a little too much for most people. Now, working at a movie theater, you can usually tell after a while what people know what they want and people who think they know what they want but have no idea what they're getting into. Man, I can read this a lot better because this is my second time reading this intro paragraph. For example, those people came in to watch Leo because they love him and will watch whatever he is in without realizing how highly inappropriate the movie is. Normally, mothers coming in to buy their teenagers tickets before bouncing are thinking it was a Titanic movie and it's not. Literally, I watched so many people come out 30 minutes in and leave stating how disgusting the movie was. We were told to warn people, especially just the Leo fans not knowing what they were getting into because people were getting mad and freaking out. So cue our little old lady, we will call Agnes. Agnes was a little old lady who was short but large woman with a very short pixie cut. She wore activewear leggings, an overlarge t-shirt, and a fanny pack. She waddled over to my ticket booth fishing her money out of her fanny pack. One ticket to Wolf of Wall Street, Agnes stated before yelling loudly, Senior! Yes, Agnes, I can tell you need a senior, and yes, she was not the type for this movie. Okay, but just so you know, it's R-rated. I started, but she groans and rolls her eyes, slapping her hand on the table. Just do your job and give me a ticket. I'm going to be late. Agnes stated. Cue to my malicious compliance. One senior coming right up. I handed her her ticket as she snatches it out of my hand and waddles off to the theater. I waved goodbye. As if on cue, 30 minutes into her entering the theater, her, like most people who have no idea what they are getting into, walks out of the theater. I was about to call my manager with glee for a refund, happy for my subtle revenge. When I realized she had just come out to make a call, all my hopes and dreams crumbled. Maybe I misread her, but she was for sure not the type to enjoy this movie. I sighed in defeat and went back to waiting for movies to get out. That was until not long after her call, three police cars with flashing lights pulled up to the front of my theater. I paused in noticeable confusion as six police officers came in with their hands on their side pistols. Since again I was in ticket booth, they approached me. Ma'am, we got a call about some illegal films here, the police officer, we will call Robert, stated. Ah, uh, I stated in a long, continuous uh, my eyes slowly drifting to Agnes, who was waddling quickly up to me. Arrest her, Agnes demanded as I just continued my continuous uh, and arrest them too. She pointed to the concession workers in loud, noticeable anger. For what reason, ma'am? Robert asked, now seeing how calm and quiet the theater was because the movies were in. For that disgusting illegal thing of what they are trying to say is a movie. Agnes huffed. She was red in the face and panting. I demand you shut this place down. Were you the one that called about the children engaging in adult activities illegally films? Can't say it or it won't be approved. Robert asked as he completely went dead silent. Child, what? We had nothing remotely like that here or ever for that matter. Yes, Agnes stated. That thing in there, that wolf of Wall Street is illegal. They cannot show that kind of trash in here. Ma'am, I saw that movie. There is nothing really illegal in it and there is no children engaging in adult activities illegally films in it either. Robert stated pretty ticked off. Is this why you called us? Yes, because back in my day, the police would have shut this place down. Agnes was screaming her head off as two of the officers got the hint and just left. Ma'am, do you know what you did is illegal? It is filing a false police report. 911 is for emergencies only, not for your bad movie reviews. Robert had had enough of her at this point. But I didn't file a false police report. Agnes whined as Robert turned to me in a very, very nice tone. Have a great day, ma'am. He beamed with obvious annoyance. 
They started to file out and Agnes angrily followed them yelling to them. Right when Robert was about to exit the door, Agnes grabbed the push bar for the door and yanked it back to keep the door closed to not let him leave, hitting Robert with the door. Yes, if you're wondering, that does count as assaulting an officer. Last I saw, Agnes was escorted to the police cruiser with shiny new arm bracelets. Though I'm not sure what happened to her, but I never saw Agnes again. I did see Robert though. He got a free movie on me, but it was busy and I couldn't talk to him to see what happened with our dear old friend. But I can tell it was just amazing things. For a second there, I really thought this was going to be yesterday's story, but then it divulged into something entirely different, and I'm okay with that. Don't charge me for something you need me to have. I worked for a company that charged to replace access cards. I think it was more like $25 though. I understand the charge for lost cards, and it's an incentive not to lose them. Thing is, my card stopped working one day. I had it, it was several years old, it didn't work, and they wanted to charge me to replace it. I refused. Every single day for a month or so, I went to the security desk and signed myself in and got a temporary card for the day. Finally, my boss got so tired of it that he just told me to pay for it and that he'd reimburse me. I did, and he did. Okay, there definitely needs to be a difference between lost card and card that no longer works. OP should definitely not have had to have pay for a card. So I'm glad they chose the route that they did. That's all the stories we have for today. If you liked what you heard, subscribe for more content like this daily. Until next time, have an amazing day.